So according to the street, Walmart is sharing a warning for customers. And it's not just for customers, in my opinion, but we're going to run through this article. We're going to talk about it a little bit, and I'd love to know what you guys think about it at the end of this video. So the retail giant's CEO shared some news that shoppers should pay attention to, even if they shop at Target, Costco, or Kroger. And uh, I will ask you guys, just please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, uh, and share this video with other people so we can get more folks involved in this conversation. So it says that the biggest players in the grocery space essentially operate on a level playing field, Walmart, Costco, and Kroger, plus perhaps Publix, which has a large footprint in the South, all have enormous buying power buying in bulk. So that allows them to get the best prices from vendors and pass those on to customers. Each chain, of course, makes choices. Costco, uh, for example, uses its limited product choice to push orders for the items it does, it does stock even higher, giving it an added leverage. And for the most part, however, all of these companies are really big and they have the leverage to get the best prices possible. As we saw during the COVID pandemic, there are a lot of factors that go into pricing. Now, I do want to take a little bit of a sidebar here. And it was a short that I uploaded to my, my, my channel from a video, a full video. It was a full video, but I made a short from that video. And in that short, it said that Walmart has found a way to, to get customers to spend more money. And I do believe that a lot of folks viewed that short out of context. Uh, and it wasn't me trying to bash Walmart. It was me trying to explain to you how to make more money. And Walmart essentially executed on that by finding ways to get customers to spend more, not charge them more, but spend more. And that is literally it. I was actually watching. I want to say it was I think it was Daily Driven Exotics. And in this video, they were getting into their sponsorship uh, promotion or pay promotion for the video and this video was about their McLaren 720S, or actually 720, I think it's like a GTR or something, some some crazy race spec 720 uh, special model that McLaren ultimately was not going to repair. They were blacklisted because of some of the things that they were doing to the car, and it was documented and transmitted through McLaren computers to England, and they knew all about it. And ultimately, they weren't even going to give this shop, which probably had the capabilities to make the... Uh, repairs themselves, the ability to access the um, proprietary computer system to uh, reset and recalibrate recalibrate the suspension system, which is unfortunate because this is happening a lot. The right to repair is literally not there and manufacturers are holding customers hostage. And in this instance, not even hostage to a point of which they'll just charge them more money. They literally just said, no, we are not going to fix your car. You spent hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars on McLaren, but we're not going to fix it. So it's pretty much a rolling paperweight at this point. However, in that conversation, he says, look, guys, if I'm going he's, he's gonna, to keep it real with you. If you want to make a lot of money, if you want to buy a Lamborghini, you're going to have to sell a lot of things. You're going to have to make a lot of money. And that was him getting into the segue where he was talking about packaging and shipping and drop shipping merchandise to customers. But he kept it real. And that's what I was trying to explain in that video that actually got broken up into a short that Walmart, Costco, Target, Publix, whoever, in order to make more money, you're going to have to, from a business perspective, from B2C business perspective, or even B2B, get people to spend more, get people to buy more. You don't have to overcharge them. You don't have to take advantage of them, but you do have to entice them to shop with you, to spend with you, to spend more money with you in order for that to happen. Now, if you work a regular nine to five job or, uh, or a, a W-2 employee, and it's really just a clock in, clock out, paycheck to paycheck situation, you really don't have much upside or upper hand there. But if you're a commission-based employee or performance-based employee or self-employed or a YouTube content creator or you got a side hustle or whatever it is, whatever, even if you're investing in stocks, crypto, real estate, you have to find a way to be able to produce more. That's, that's it. It's not going to come to you. It's not going to be handed to you. It's not going to be cut through some stimulus check. It's not going to be some form of universal basic income. 
If you want that money, you have to figure out a way to get it. And the best way to do it is to convince customers to shop with you and shop more with you and spend more with you and buy more from you, plain and simple. On top of that, get the best deal you can for what you sell. And Walmart and Costco and Target and all these other big box retailers are doing that by using their size and their and their purchasing power and buying in bulk and buying in large volumes to get the lowest price possible to still sell at relatively lower prices and discounts, but still produce the profit they need to continuously move the chains forward. And if you're doing it with YouTube content creation or any online business, then the best way to do that, in my opinion, is by literally trying to do as much as you can yourself without having to outsource and pay. But if you're going to pay, pay the least amount possible, get the biggest bang for your buck. And SaaS software uh, as, a, as a service is huge, which is one of the things that I've been using here recently that has allowed me to multiply my efforts tremendously and increase my income more than I really could have thought possible in a short period of time by literally just clicking a button. But we're going to dive into this. And it says that supply chain concerns, labor costs, and even weather can drive prices up or down. That's an ongoing problem, and it has led to Walmart CEO Doug McMillan sharing some sobering news during his company's first quarter earnings call. And it says Walmart CEO has a price warning. McMillan's message was not all bleak. He did have some good news mixed in with the bad. And I quote, in Walmart U.S., general merchandise costs are now lower than a year ago, which is great, but they're still higher than two years ago on like items is what he shared. And the CEO shared that some categories have remained stubbornly high, even as other areas have shown more improvement. Now, this is similar to how the Fed calculates CPI and inflation. So the numbers uh, it says that the merchandise, co merchandise costs are now lower than a year ago which is great, but they're still higher than two years ago. So that's that's literally how we're seeing inflation coming down and getting under control in comparison to how com inflation is calculated based on an annual basis on a 12-month rolling calendar. So it's, inflation is under control in comparison to last year, but in comparison to two years ago, it's still high. It's still, it's still up there. Um, and it says that... Uh, the CEO shared that some categories have remained stubbornly high, even as other areas have shown more improvement. And again, this is similar to how the Fed calculates CPI, uh, where the areas that haven't shown improvement are more than likely energy and food costs, which are extremely volatile and too volatile to include in inflation CPI calculations. So. The article says, and I quote, in the dry grocery and consumables category like paper goods, we continue to see high single digit to low double digit cost inflation, and we all need those prices to come down, is what he shared. And the persistently high rates of inflation in these categories lasting for such a long period of time are weighing on some of the families that we serve. The CEO believes that higher prices in the grocery space also impact customers' budgeting. Basically, if people don't know what their grocery bill will be, not to mention fluctuating gas prices, they may be more conservative in other areas, which is means they're going to pull back on this discretionary spending. And I quote, the stubborn inflation in dry grocery and consumables is one of the key factors creating uncertainty for us in the back half of the year because of the cumulative impact on discretionary spending in other categories, specifically general merchandise is what he said. So pretty much summing up what I had already assumed was coming. So Walmart has focused on grocery. Now get this. While some people order groceries for same day delivery and curbside pickup, a lot of people still want to shop for food in stores. There's no digital way to look at produce or see which meat or fish looks good that day. So the chain sees an opportunity to use groceries to drive store visits. That strategy has been working, according to McMillan and I quote, we continue to gain market share in the grocery category, including the higher income and younger shoppers. And we saw good growth in membership income in both businesses is what he said. The company's growth in grocery includes its Sam, Sam's Club brand. So 
as they were making a huge push to push people online, you know, there's still some pushback, as they said, you know, you can't really look at produce on the internet. And I know a lot of folks would much rather not buy their produce from Walmart, but if they did, or they were forced to, or they had to, that was their only option. They would definitely want to make sure the produce that they got was to their liking. So they're driving customers to the store, which is a good thing. And while they're in the store, they're trying to get the customers to buy more, which is part of getting them to spend more, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. I'm just saying it's a business. It's just a business strategy. Okay. Similar to, as we shared with you a few days ago, Walmart is going to be doing more advertising. They're going to do audio advertising through speakers in the parking lot. They're going to do audio advertising in store over the speaker system and visual advertising in store with different displays and QR codes and QR tags and and videos playing on different screens, as well as advertising on the screen during self-checkout. So that's coming. Yes, there will be AI and um, automation and algorithms attached to this to specifically target you while you shop to try to get you to be more likely to buy because not everybody's going to walk into Walmart with the same wants, needs, desires, expectations, or, you know, um, ability to be sold the same way. So Walmart is going to do their best to calculate and, you know, somewhat, you know, try to categorize their shoppers and their, and the consumers and, and the visitors to the store to see what type of marketing works best on them to be most effective in that short period of time, that opportunity they have to catch their attention. For instance, like this video here, I have a short period of time after the initial click on the title and thumbnail to get your attention and to keep you here and to share with you the things that I want you to know and hear. It's no different than walking inside of a Walmart and going shopping. They are doing the same. And inversely, or you know, I guess comparatively, advertisers do the same on YouTube. And they look for creators who have that ability to connect with viewers to then spread their message to the viewers, assuming that the viewers of that creator's channel, their subscriber base is interested in the products that they have to offer for sale. And that's how it works. It's a continuous revolving door and cycle of folks trying to continuously get more folks to spend more money. That's it. That's it. Now, at the same time, there should be a huge push to try to get people to make more money so that they continue they can continue to spend more money, which is kind of where I fall in the mix. I want to tell you guys the truth of what's happening, what's going on, what's likely to occur, how to prepare, but also how to make more money for whatever it is you choose that you want to buy and invest in, uh, whether it's a, a house or uh, an a, or income property, investment property, or a new vehicle, or college, or paying off student loans, or buying a homestead or starting a farm or going on vacation or building a retirement plan, whatever it is, I want you guys to be able to do that. But I'm going to get right. In, I'm going to get back into this, this article here. So it says that we continue to gain market share in the grocery category, including with higher income and younger shoppers. And we saw good growth in membership income in both businesses, which is huge because we've talked about the higher income shoppers, moving and changing their habits to shop at Walmart. And the company's growth in grocery includes its Sam's Club brand, which Sam's Club had a huge push for memberships. And it says, and I quote, at Sam's Club US, member count and plus member penetration hit all-time highs in the quarter. Our growth is now being driven by convenience in addition to price. We see it across formats and income and age cohorts, end quote. So Walmart's CFO, Chief Financial Officer, John David Rainey, also noted that even with prices being higher than they were two years ago, Walmart's pricing power has helped it continue to add grocery customers. And share, I'm sorry, share gains in grocery continue, including from higher income households, as our strong price gaps resonate with customers who are increasingly prioritizing value and convenience. So Walmart is now... It seems as though they're saying that they're going to make a much an even stronger push towards value and convenience while also trying to bring you back into the stores and not so much force too much online. Now, there's still there's still going to be a heavy push for online Walmart spark and deliveries and pickups and this, that and the other. But they do realize the value of the customers being in the store and this after they've probably come to some form of reasonable solution to mitigate the possible risk 
of loss and theft and all the problems that were occurring with people stealing stuff from Walmart, bomb threats, setting, setting stores on fires, the whole nine. If it weren't the stores, it would then be the cybersecurity threats as people are going to be trying to hack this the systems. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, if you want to find a job that pays you over $100,000 a year, just go into cybersecurity. There are so many opportunities right now for cybersecurity careers. It is unbelievable. But the Walmart, the, 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 the title of this said Walmart shares a warning for customers. And what is that warning exactly? Well, I think the warning is that, yeah, some of the prices may actually come down, but not all of them. And uh, there are expectations of maybe um, some changes that will be made because of this and Walmart's push for uh, reaching younger shoppers and higher income earners and different things like that and other business strategies that they're going to deploy in order to produce more revenue. Their profits hopefully will maintain and stay the same, if not grow, because I don't want to operate a business that continuously produces higher revenues, but lower profit. Because that, that, that's, that's like getting a, a job, getting a pay raise, an increase, but not actually having more money in savings or to invest because all of your other costs have increased the same, if not more than your pay raise. And we've talked about this before on how you normally get a two to 3% annual increase, which was only designed to keep up with inflation. But when inflation is actually closer to like 18, 19%, your two to 3% annual increase doesn't really do much for you at the end of the day, because you're still technically losing money more than you make. If that makes sense. So, and I think the Walmart's warning is that it's going to happen at Walmart. It's going to happen at Sam's Club. It's going to happen at Costco. It's going to happen at Kroger. It's going to happen at Publix. It's going to happen pretty much everywhere. We are seeing stores closing down. We are seeing big box retailers go bankrupt. We're seeing business be business. We're seeing the evolution of business. We're seeing business cycles that are normal and to be expected happening and occurring right before our eyes as to be expected and quite possibly more normalized now that we are slowly transitioning out of the chaos of the pandemic. There are still issues of some supply chain shortages and and and, and challenges with labor and different things like that, higher interest rates, the whole nine. These are going to play a part in this, but at the end of the day, uh, I think we need to probably still maintain a similar position and objective similar to these big businesses, which I've told you guys before. Let's pay attention and look at those who are doing things similar to what we would like to have done ourselves and kind of mimic their their strategy and their model. How are they making more money? How are they producing more revenue? How are they being more profitable? How are they saving? How are they reducing their expenses and their overhead and their operating expenses to make the most out of this situation? How are they able to scale? How are they able to further build out their brand and produce more and accomplish the goals that they have set forth, set forth for themselves, not to mention the strategies and plans that they have probably five or 10 years down the road, which we need to be looking at more so than just right in front of us or just tomorrow. We need to be looking at the big picture, okay? Is that the growth of your business? Is that the elimination of debt? Is that the 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 build out of a secure and you know uh, sustainable retirement strategy, savings and income? As I can share with you guys, how some of the richest, wealthiest retirees spend their retirement having amassed multi-million dollar savings account balances of five to six million dollars that produce substantial passive income for them so that they don't have to worry about retirement and they actually spend on average about a hundred thousand dollars a year on travel they live modest lives but they explore the world and they make memories and you know have fun how about that how about that have fun I'll leave it at that. We'll leave it on have fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys had fun. I hope it was helpful. If it was, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, questions, concerns. If there's anything you want me to touch on in the future, uh, article-wise, you know, not touch on like that. Let me know. Share this with friends and anyone that it may be helpful too. I really would appreciate it. Make sure you check out the free links in the description down below. Check me out on all my other channels. And uh, if you want to become a member, join the channel membership. And uh, we'd love to have you. 
posting exclusive private content for the members only. And until next time, you guys take care. Be safe. See you real soon. Bye.